Hey yo everyone, Bad Oz EFG here with another day. Hope everyone's having a great day. We're on hand stream mode again because today I'm going to show you guys how you install a subwoofer in an FG Falcon. So let's get right into it. Now, I don't quite have the time available right now between driving around places with Bub to actually take everything out. So I'm going to leave it all as it is in the car and show you where I've wired it and how I've done it. So we'll start up front. Also be leaving this video as uncut as possible, that way you guys can see it all in as much depth as possible. So I start with the positive of the battery terminal. So I'm going to try not to touch anything I don't want to touch right now, but what you get is a O-ring clip to screw into here, and you want to wire your positive in there, I need to cover it up a little bit, but um, get your positive in there, you want a decently thick um, positive uh, wire, which uh, you can either pick up if you're in Australia, I'd say Dick Smith or something uh, similar to that. If not, not too sure where you guys would get it, but it's not too hard to get wire like this. But you want it to be able to carry a pretty decent voltage and um, cover a decent amp of uh, flow. And for this one, you just want to wire it up in whatever way you can tuck it as best possible. And then coming back here, there's actually the firewall plug which can pop out. And I've just fed it straight through the gap there, which all out come into the cabin, which is uh, probably the quickest and safest way to get that done. So we'll take it, take us out of the mount for a sec so I can get some better angles with you guys. Coming up under the footwell, we can see up in here that's where the firewall plug is and here's the cable that runs out. Don't worry, it actually doesn't touch anything. And I bring it in behind this kickboard plate here. And that runs in under here and you want to channel under here. To get this out here, you dig in here and back in here, in these two gaps here, and you want to lift and pull this piece out. There'll be two Phillips head screws of uh, relatively small size. Unscrew those, and this whole um, sideboard will come out. This just comes out up here by tugging on a little bit. It'll have about three or four clips, but you need to get this out first. And um, that'll allow you to channel that all the way up and following along. Back this way, you'll find your side sideboard here. There's clips along the sides here, so if you can get your finger in there and be patient and wiggle, you'll be able to pop them all out, all the way down to the bottom. And that's where you can channel it along under. Coming onto along the back. Similar principle to the one on the front. Pull this up, I believe there's only one, but there may be two, I haven't done this in a while. Um, to lift up this piece. This won't come off unless you take the seat up, but lifting it up will get the job done Because once you've wired it along and under here You'll be able to just tuck it up under this and you'll actually be able to see just there is um, I believe those are my rear speaker lines I've wired in and the power is hiding in behind it Drop this down And I poked them all after tucking them all up along here they poke out and hook into my amp from there. And don't forget when you're wiring something like this up, you can get a little uh, case usually, or you can go get a proper one if you get a kit, and just make sure you're running a decent fuse for it. I'm running a pretty hefty 12 inch subwoofer, so I'm running a 30 amp fuse, but if you're running something smaller, I'd recommend probably a 20. Obviously, if it's just gonna keep blowing on you, go up 10, but make sure that uh, you keep it as low as possible to avoid any fire issues. Now, for the Falcons specifically, um, there's generally no RCA lines, which are these two here. This is your left and right input for the amp to get the subwoofer working correctly. Um, most aftermarket head units and things like that will actually come with these, and you can route them along uh, the similar channel where we wired our positive power line. But for these in particular, You'll need to go get yourself a converter, which looks something a little bit like this, which inputs from a grounding point and a left and a right speaker. So in this case, I just have it grounded along with the amp, so it's actually connected to the ground on the amp itself, which worked perfectly fine. And as far as the left and right, so these are the ones that channel back and up into here because normally I've looked on a lot of diagrams and 
up and under that kickboard under there is where all the speaker wires line up but I haven't found a single wiring diagram that actually tells you which is which so I did bring it back into these door still sorry not door stills um, side panels in here which have the wires for the rears and I've spliced them in along those lines there when I found them um, I honestly can't remember which colors they are you should be able to find that up this end pretty easily though and I've spliced it in over there and I've done the same on the other side of the car and spliced it back over here and that is how I got my left and right for the RCA lining and uh, so yeah that converts it down into the correct channel for the amplifier to take it this isn't going to sound as good as if you can actually get this channel from a head unit so if you have another car and you have a head unit that can do that you'll want to go through with that Otherwise, in something like a Falcon, for now, this is pretty much what we're left with unless you have a Kion unit. Um, but yeah, from there, you want to make sure that's all done. Um, as far as the grounding line, um, let's see, where have I routed that one? That's been a while. I believe, oh, okay, yeah. So, generally, you want to try and find a point. I don't know why this didn't work for me, but something like a bolt to the chassis where you can put the wire into. I've tried to do it here before, it's actually got some wire left from when I did, but that didn't work for me personally, so I actually sent this one back up front. And I believe, if I dig into here, oh, okay, I know where it is, it's in behind here, so if you pop out this panel here, if I can get it, there we are, this bolt here, that's pretty close to the battery line, and that's actually where I've run my grounding wire. Straight back in here, that keeps it tucked away. I've tucked it along the same lines as the power, and um, that's worked excellent. Now, the final thing you're gonna need is the remote line, which is some point in the car that you need to hook into that only turns on when the car turns on. This avoids the unit running at all times, and it will make sure that your battery won't die because, you know, you turn the car off, you want the amp to turn off too, otherwise it's just gonna kill your battery. So, in the case of the Falcon, I've actually just jumped it in there and thrown it in, and I believe this is the phone um, accessory port, which is just the phone charging outlet here, back at the fuse relay, and I've just jumped it in on the positive end of that. You can do something similar to that, you could even wire it into the positive on that um, terminal behind there. Anything like that that turns on only with the car, if you wire it into the positive, that will work just fine. Obviously, make sure you test everything, double check every connection, turn it on, run it, double check it again. If something doesn't quite work right, try and find a way around it. Like I said, my ground point didn't work at the back of the car where it was supposed to, so I changed it around and I came up with the next best solution. Just make sure that any exposed wiring that can cause any injury, make sure you cover them up. I've seen so many cases of people wiring something up and uh, having something go wrong, such as touching onto the actual bare metal with positive and negative terminals. I've seen that come from in a speaker um, actual setup, and they had the terminals touching on the metal frame of the door, and I had to fix that up before someone received an electric shock that they didn't need. But yeah, just make sure you're being safe, being smart. I can go probably fuller in depth if this video gets enough attention. I might do an install video if I do. Um, one of my friend's cars, I tend to do that a lot recently, I've probably done about five cars in the past month um, doing full speaker and subwoofer installs, even head units. Um, if I get another opportunity to do that, I'll make sure I record that for you guys. Um, but otherwise, yeah, let me know if you really want, and this gets enough attention, I'll pull it all out and I'll actually show you guys me installing it front to back. But for the moment, trying to avoid to do that but if it does get the attention that you guys actually want to see it happen rather than me show you where it is then sure i'll get onto that but otherwise i hope everyone's having a great day i'll catch you next time